Today I want to talk to the fathers, but everybody in the house will still learn something from what I'm going to share. The title of my message is The Husband, The Father, The Man of God. I repeat, The Husband, The Father, The Man of God. Can you say that? Together, let's say it together. The husband, the father, the man of God. Now, marriage is not only about love. It's a responsibility. It's about God giving responsibility and leadership. For the man is about leadership. For the man is responsibility. The responsibility of training and raising godly children, providing for them, leading the family, and making sure that the will of God is fulfilled. A time comes in a man's life when he decides to have a wife. Many people have many reasons why they go for wives. In those days, our fathers used to have wives so they can have enough hands to help in the farm. So as many wives as they have and as many children as they can have, then they have enough employees to take care of their business, their farming business. People used to have wives so that they can cook their meals and bear children and be there for their children. But we understand that marriage is more than all this when you study your Bible. And so today we want to look at the role of the father, the role of the man. And his role is a multiple role. He's first a husband to a woman called the wife. And then he's a father to the children of the marriage. But at the same time, he is also the man of God. The man who represents God in the family. Which gives a lot of responsibilities. And we're going to see that quickly as we run through this message. And I pray God that you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. So the man has got these three roles and he has to play all of them. No one should be left behind for the other. He will remain a faithful, loving husband. He will remain a faithful father to the children. And he will remain the true representative of God in the family as the man of God. So let's start with the husband. The foundation of the husband and wife relationship is love. And the Bible emphasizes it more when it encourages and charges the man who is a husband to love the wife. The wife has a mandate from God to submit to the wife, I mean sub submit to the husband completely in all things. But the man, the husband, has the mandate to love his wife. And this kind of love is an unconditional love. In other words, whether she submits enough or not, you still to love her. Whether she satisfies you or not, you still to love her. Whether she does for you all the things you wanted to do for you, you know, the way you want it done, you, you are still expected to love her. Just as God loves us. The Bible says the love that he is talking about is the love that is between Jesus and the church. The same way Jesus loves the church. The same way Jesus loves the church to the point of laying down his life for the church. Dying for our souls. That same way we are to love. Love. Love our wives. Amen, somebody. So every effort must be made by all to make sure the love that brought them together does not go out. You are to make sure that love does not go out, the love does not go sour, does not become bitter, but you maintain the sweetness, that loving, good relationship, you are supposed to maintain it. So sometimes raising children can bring strain on the marriage. And sometimes it can bring a lot of strain on the marriage, you know. And then, you know, but love must be preserved. By every means possible, you must preserve the love. You must endure, bear, tolerate, so that you can move on and make sure that that love that brought you together is not short, is sustained, it does not, you know, diminish. It does not turn to hatred somewhere along the line. And this can only happen when you always remind yourself who you are in Christ, and what your role is in the marriage. And then apart from that, you remind yourself of the fact that your thoughts determine everything. So you watch your thoughts and you are careful not to think the wrong things. 
So the most important human relationship in a man's life is his relationship with his wife. Before marriage, your mother, your father, your brothers, your sisters are your most important people in your life. But when you get married, your wife becomes the most important person and the husband becomes the most important person to the wife. And so you must cherish that. You must recognize that this woman is my other half. Like the Bible says, that the two shall become one flesh. Which means I am one part and my wife is the other part. And the Bible says no one ever hates himself. So you cherish and take care of yourself. So the same way you treat yourself is the same way you are to treat your wife. The same way you love yourself is the same way you are to love your wife. The same way you make sure that you, know, you are comfortable, everything is working out well for you. That's the same way you are to do to your wife. So before a man becomes a father, do not forget your wife has always been there. So it will never come to a point where your children will replace your wife. And that's another mistake that people make in marriage. They choose their son or their daughter and they give more affection, show more affection, show more concern for the children of the marriage than for the woman who together you bought those children. And sometimes women do the same thing too. Their children become more important than their husband. All this is wrong. Your husband, your wife must remain the most important human being in your life till death separates you. That's the only way God designed marriage to work well. That's why I say man shall leave his father and mother and join up with his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Now, he didn't say a man will leave his father and mother. Why the woman stay with the father and mother? Because if that's what it means, it means it will not be two. There will be as many as the father, the mother, the wife, plus the family members. So, which means as a man is leaving his father and mother, the woman is also leaving his father and mother, and the two of them meet at a point, and then they become one flesh. So, there has to be that understanding that the most important human being, human being, I mean, most important human being in your life is your spouse. So, it is this understanding that you must have at the back of your mind if you are going to fulfill your role as a husband. That means you must do everything within your power to make sure that your love for your wife is sustained, is retained. It does not go sour. You don't allow situations to eat you up to the point where you begin to hate her. Now, please quickly, let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 25. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will be one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. So God expects you to, to leave and cleave. Leave your family behind, your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, and cleave and become one. So marriage is oneness. Marriage is oneness. So you are one with your spouse. You think only the same thing. You walk towards the same thing. You, you uphold the same thing, the same vision. You want to just live your life together and be happy. And so you must love. So this is a counsel that God gives in Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 21 to 33, and also making reference to the passage we just read. That is verse 24 of Genesis 2. Verse 24 of Genesis 2. The reference is made here also in Ephesians. Ephesians 5, 21 to 33. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That means the man will submit, the wife will submit. As long as you are believers, submit to one another based on your relationship with Jesus. Then number 20, verse 22 says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. This is very clear. The man is the head of the family, the leader of the family. We have problems when wives want to lead. We have problems when the wives want to be the decision maker. We have problems when wives try to challenge the authority of the man. If you stay in your God-given position and remain in submission to your husband, there won't be problems. This is very important. 
So you are not to command, but you are to suggest. You are not to command, you are to try to influence him subtly, explaining and revealing the truth that you have, that you think or believe he does not have. That's the way it works. So the man, therefore, is giving this church to love while the woman is to submit. Verse 24, now as a church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Not some things, everything. Wives are to submit. So I always counsel those who are not married, please never marry a man you cannot submit to. Never marry a man you cannot submit to. You can be older than the man, you can be younger than the man. If you cannot submit to the man, don't marry that person. This is very important. Because submission is key to the success of your marriage. Verse 25. It says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. And gave himself up for her to make her holy. Cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. So God expects the husband and commands the husband to love his wife. So all the men, your duty to your wife is love your wife. And love her not just the way you think you should love her, but love her the same way Christ loves the church. And how does Jesus love the church? Jesus died for the church. Jesus is patient with the church. Jesus is constantly working on the church. Jesus does not give up on the church. Even when we make mistakes, even when we sin, even when we fail him, he doesn't give up on us. He continues to minister to us, send the Holy Spirit to us, send men to us, always working, washing us with the water to improve us. So he, on that day, he can present us to himself without blemish without wrinkle without sin without evil character and evil habit so he's constantly working on us so the same way the husband should help the wife to become better improve the wife do whatever you can to brush her up if you feel that she's not measuring up so yours is to package her well yours is to bring out the god in her yours is to bring out the greatness that is in her that yours is to make sure that the potential she has she's able to max release them and maximize them and become the person that god wants her to be so that she will fit you perfectly well just as you have dreamed it to be praise the lord somebody am i communicating so your duty is not to fight your wife your duty is not to trample upon her but to love her. A, a husband that loves the wife will not beat the wife. A husband that loves the wife will be patient with the wife. A husband that loves the wife will care for the wife, will be there for her. When she's crying, will be there to cry with her. When she needs a shoulder to lean on, will be there. It's not go and take care of yourself and walk away. But when the man is sick, when the man is not feeling well, the wife will be there, not seeing him, you know, cleaning him up, covering him. But when the wife, he said, go to the hospital and stay there. Amen? No, you love. When you love someone, you give attention. When you love someone, you, pay, you spend time. When you love someone, you also spend money. When you love someone, you are there to listen. You are there to show concern and show care. And that's exactly what Jesus does. So when we cry to him, he listens to us. Sometimes he will say, don't worry, everything is going to be okay. You hear that. You feel that inside of you. Have, has anybody ever experienced that in the presence of God when you are crying and you are complaining about your problem? He comes there to assure you. And that's exactly what the husband is supposed to do. And while the husband is doing that, the wife is to do what? Submit to him in all things. This is very, very important. Now, verse 28 says, In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. As their own bodies. The same way you love yourself, take good care of yourself. You don't want injury. You don't like insults. You don't like somebody to keep you waiting. You don't like somebody to tell you lies. So anything you know you don't like, don't give it to her. So if you don't like lies, never lie to your wife. If you don't like somebody to keep you waiting, never keep her waiting. If you don't like somebody to starve you, don't starve her. If you don't like somebody to tell you no when you expect yes, then don't say no when the person is expecting yes. Is someone hearing me? Just the same way you love yourself. He who loves his wife loves himself. So if you love your wife, you won't cheat on her. How would you feel if your wife is cheating on you? You wouldn't like it. If you even see her talking with somebody, you want to know who is that person. Who is the person on the phone with her? You're talking and laughing and smiling. Who is the person? But when it's your turn, you say, get away from there. Is it your business? 
So there's always the element of jealousy in every human being. Even God himself said, I am a jealous God. God doesn't want to share. Nobody wants to share. So what is not good for you is not good for your wife. That's what the point. So that's why I say, love her as you love your own body. He said, he who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. You see again, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. Verse 32 says, this is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect her husband. Look at this. This is not may. Everything here is must. Must. You must love your wife. Wife must submit to the husband. You get it? It's must. There's no other way. If you want success, you want peace, you want joy, love your wife. It's a must. If you want your husband to love you more and more and encourage you, you want to encourage him and you want your home to be peaceful, wife must submit. So the wife submits, the husband loves. Her submission even encourages the husband to love more. And then the husband's love encourages the wife to submit more. That's how it works. It's not demanding submission when there is no love. And the wife cannot demand love when there is no submission. So both of you have to be reaching out to each other. How do you do that? I love you as a husband. And you are reaching out to me. How do you do that? You submit to me. When we do it like this, then the marriage will be enjoyable, peaceful, happy. Play that role. That's what God expects of you. Number two role, the father. You know, when a man and a woman come together, then suddenly something happens. The woman becomes pregnant and then babies start to come. And if it doesn't come, they cry. They pray. They run around. They go from place to place looking for how to make it happen. But it's not just having children. And one of the reasons why God did not make sex to be free for all is responsibility of the child. The children that will come through that relationship, who is going to be responsible? I've asked myself, why did God have to restrict a man and a woman in a marriage? Why don't just everybody just go where you like, do whatever you like, you know? Huh? Eh? So by now, some of you should be counting about 20,000 women you have slept with and maybe 100 men you have slept with. But the question is, who is not going to be responsible for the pregnancy? The baby that is going to be born, who is going to be responsible? When the woman is sick, who is going to be there to help? Who is going to feed the child? Who is going to train the child? Who is going to spend time to invest as a father into the life of the child? So God created marriage so that the babies that will come through sexual relationship will have parents. Someone to tutor them, someone to train them, someone to raise them, someone to provide for them, someone to make sure that everything works well in their lives and that they become who God intended them to be. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. But if, a, if any Provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house. He had denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Any man who cannot provide for his family. Any man who cannot provide for his children. For his wife and for his children. The Bible says he is worse than an unbeliever, an infidel. Someone who does not know God. In other words, if you know God, you will take care of your children. You will provide for your family, your wife and your children. If you know God, you will. If you don't do it, it means you don't know God. In other words, it is impossible for you to know God and believe it like that. So Apostle Paul says, any man who cannot provide for his family is worse than an infidel. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you will not lack the means of providing for your children. God will cost money to overflow in your life. Your business will work. Your trade will prosper. In your job, you will prosper. Promotion will always be your portion. You will not lack money. Money will overflow so that you can give them the best in the name of Jesus. I pray for you also that you will not be stingy towards them. May God give you a giving heart. But you will not spoil them too with too many things. Otherwise, they will come to a point where they don't know how to live on their own. 
Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. He said, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. So the training of a child is part of your responsibility as a father. Two more scriptures and then I begin to explain. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 13 and verse 14. Please write them down, go home, look at them. Proverbs 23, verse 13 and 14. He said, do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish him with the rod, he will not die. Punish him with the rod and save his soul from death. How many of you realize that children sometimes don't listen to their mother? They don't respect their mother. Their mother will be talking something serious, playing and laughing with her. But when the father surfaces, only looking at the child alone, the child will behave. And some mothers, when they say, I'm going to report you to your father, he will say, please, mommy, I will do whatever you say. It's not that the father is a tiger. It's not that the father is a lion or is a bully. But they know the father figure, the way they interpret it is different from the way they interpret the mother figure. The mother loves, the mother cares, the mother will cuddle, the mother will play, the mother will do the hair, the mother will, you understand what I'm saying? Clean up the poo poo, do this, running here and there. So they say, the mother loves me so much, my mother can never beat me. But when the father shows his face, just looking at the child alone, the child interprets the mood as he knows what is coming. So you can now imagine raising a child without a father figure, the child will not be complete. You will think you have done your best. Yes, you have done your best truly, but something is always missing. And I've read a lot of stories where some people say, I never knew a father. In fact, he is a father that I never had. So that means something is missing. They have been longing for the father's love, for the father's presence, for the father's discipline, and they never got it. Proverbs 22 verse 15, quickly. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it out from him. Now, please note this. The scripture is not saying that you should become uh, my Tyson in the house. The scripture is not saying that you become a bully to your children. That every little thing you'll be beating them, beating them, beating them with stick. That's not what it simply means. What it's trying to talk about is that discipline is essential to correct them and to drive foolishness away from their lives. Discipline. And the father knows how to do it better. So the man is not only the husband to his wife, but is a father to the children of the man. So this is with great responsibilities. So it is the responsibility of the man to provide for his wife from the scriptures we have read. It is a responsibility of the man to provide for his children. It is the responsibility of the man to provide housing for them, provide good food, provide good clothing, good education, and good moral instruction. That is your responsibility. You know, when God made you the head, what he simply said is that you are responsible for everything that happens in your family. So that is to say, success and failure is on your head. If your children do well, you take the credit. If they don't do well, I hold you responsible. But our men in this part of the world will not take responsibility for the failure of the children. They only take responsibility when the child is doing well. That's my son. That is my daughter. Because he came first in the school. Because he achieved something and everybody is applauding. He said, that's my son. The one that does like his father. But when he misbehaves, say you are like your mother. It doesn't work with God. That may work your community or the place where you come from. But with God, that doesn't work. As far as God is concerned, he appoints people in leadership position to hold them responsible. Like this church now, if anything goes wrong, I'm responsible. They will call pastor. They will not call the member. It is a pastor they will call. That's all. God is going to ask me because he's put me in charge. So when he puts the man in charge of his family, the man is responsible. So the man must work with God with all his heart to make sure that he's able to succeed in the assignment God has given him. So provision is your it's important. Please, but women, can I say this to you? That does not mean that when you do business, that your money is your money. That does not mean that when you work and you earn salary, your money is your money. That's wrong. Listen, when you understand what marriage is, marriage simply means you are one. So whatever the man has is our money, our car, our house, our property. Whatever the woman has is our business, 
our money, our car, our property. So no single person in the mind will say, this is mine. It's not like that. It's ours. If you understand what oneness is in marriage. But unfortunately, because of the stories we have heard, and some of us, because of experiences we have heard, or the things we saw in the lives of our parents, we have decided that it's not going to be so with you. But I am called by God to show you the way God designed it to be. So if you will walk with it this way, it will help you. And that's why young people, you that have not chosen, choose carefully. Find the one that fits you, the one that you can agree with so it will work well. Is someone hearing me? So it is the responsibility of the father to instruct the children in the ways of the Lord, his God. It is your responsibility to instruct your children, even your wife, in the ways of the Lord. What was the problem with Adam? Adam failed and God punished him for it because he did not make sure that his wife obeyed God's instruction. Rather, he allowed his wife to talk him out of what God said and followed her in error. And so God said, because you listen to the voice of your wife, not that it is wrong to take counsel or reason with your wife, because that's one of the reasons why God gave you a wife. He said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make a helper, someone, a thinking partner, someone to consult, someone to reason together, someone to plan together and work together. But he allowed the wife to make him go against the instruction that God gave him. That was the problem. So your duty is to make sure that the will of God, the counsel of God is always carried out in your family by your children and your wife. The counsel of God, not man's counsel anyway. So it is the responsibility of the father to teach his children about life and how to live life to the fullest. Your duty is to educate your children about life. They don't know any other family but yours. You brought them to this world or God used you to bring them to this world. And so you are to educate them about life, how to live life, what life is all about, the best way to live, who to relate with, who not to relate with, what to say, how not to say it, how to be respectful, how to respond to elders, how to treat people who are nice to you and those who are not nice to you, those who help you and those who resist you. How do you relate with all of these people? That's your duty. So it is your responsibility also as a father to teach your children about relationships, good character, good habits, how to exercise control over one's thoughts and emotions and please God. The family is the first school of relationship every child ever has. The family is always the first school of relationship. That's where you get to meet human beings. That's where you hear the, you know, to interact. You look at their faces. You learn the language as they are talking with you constantly. As they are cuddling, you know the difference between love and hate. You know the difference between anger, you know, and rage and, and peace and joy and acceptance and rejection. All that you learn in the family. There are those who love you in the family. There are those who don't love you. There are those who contend with you. There are those who will hurt you. There are those who will speak against you and those who will speak in your favor. All in the family. Everything is complete in the family. Is there anybody here who never fought with his brothers or fought with his sisters? Is there anybody here who never got angry when your father spoke to you or when your mother spoke to you? Nobody. So all the things you are experiencing outside, you first experience it in your home. So that's your first school of relationship. And so responsibility is on the parents to educate the children and train them right. And show them by their example. So one problem that we have with men is that they leave the training to the mothers, which is wrong. That's why many of us fail as fathers. You do not leave the training of the children only to the moms. The moms can only do their part. And the moms are always very busy with other things. And so you must make time, instruction, gather them together, train them, minister to them. So training of children is, is not to be left with the wives. It's not to be left with the mothers, but you must be involved. You must be involved. You can, the wife can't play your role. I remember, I will never forget, and I keep sharing this. I was in a bus one day, a few, some years back, many years back, somewhere around the Dimu there, and the man, I don't know what happened, I don't know what the experience, I don't know what the story was, but the man couldn't hide it anymore, he spoke, I said, look, I will, I will never take a job where I will come back one day, and my wife, my daughter will be telling my wife, who is this uncle? You didn't understand what I said. Take a job that will keep him away from the home for so long. That when he now comes home, the little daughter will now be asking, who is this uncle? Because he does not know me. I was not there for him, so he has no idea who I am. 
The mother may have been saying, your daddy, your daddy, their daddy, but when the day he will see me, he will not know me. He will be thinking I'm on one uncle somewhere. In other words, he realizes that he needs to spend time with the children. They can only be children once. At a certain age, they can no longer be children. So if you are supposed to play your role as a father and you didn't play that role when you are supposed to play it, when are you going to play it? When they have all graduated, they are not driving cars. You will come and eat where you did not so. No. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Please, making money is important. It is your duty to make money to feed them, but do not allow making of money to provide for the family to eat up your time that you don't have time for them. Before they wake up, you have already gone. That's what the man was complaining about. Before they wake up in the morning, he's already gone. By the time he comes back from work, they have already slept. Every day. You must make time. Make time for them. Make time for them. And then, as a father, you should endeavor to be so close to your children so they can share secret things with you. So they can trust you and share their experiences with you. If you are the type that is such that they cannot approach you, then you have got a problem. Things they ought to share with you, they wouldn't want to share with you because they are scared of you. Or you are not always there because you are too busy. They will always get the answers from somewhere else. And they may get the wrong answers, the wrong counsels. And it will affect you tomorrow. You'll be wondering, why is my child like this? Why is this person behaving like this? Someone else is doing the job you are supposed to be doing. I'm feeding them with the wrong things. So play your role. Manage your time. Manage your business. Manage your activities. And find time to be with your children. Make friends with all of them. If you have three or four, don't have a favorite. I'm sorry. But we, most people do. Favorite daughter, favorite son. Even the children we know, this one is favorite. How many of you remember that was the problem Joseph had? He didn't hide it. Everybody knew that this is the favorite child from the favorite wife. And they hated him for it. Not only that, now God chooses, chooses him and starts to give him dreams that he will be the leader. They were very upset. And they wanted to kill it by all means. Kill that dream. Our father's heart is with him. Now, leadership with him. No way. So don't do that. Don't create problems for the children so that after you have gone, your family will stay united. Amen? Love everybody equally. Show them affection. Don't always, you play with A, but you leave B and C. Anything you want to do, you will call A, but you leave B and C. Anywhere you want to go, you will carry A, you will leave B and C. Every time you buy something, you always buy something special for A, and the rest you buy just anything goes. Don't do that. Give attention to all. Otherwise, a time will come, they will start hiding things from you. Things you ought to know. Questions they ought to ask you, they won't be able to ask you, they'll be asking other people. Are you getting my point, parents? God bless you. Now the third role, the role of a man of God. So we have seen that you are a husband to the wife, and now children have come, you are also the, the father to the children and your responsibilities. We have talked about it now. Let's quickly look at the role as a man of God. Please, I want you to understand you are, you are the God's representative in your family. Every man must have a good and close relationship with God Almighty. I know probably your wife got born again before you. Or maybe your wife, because she has a little more time than you, you are too busy with work and business. So you can provide for the family. So your wife got a little more time. So she spends more time reading the Bible and praying. So you have now concluded your wife is too close to God. I'm, go I'm covered. My wife is a prayer warrior. I'm covered. My wife is a pastor, a deaconess in the church. I am covered. So my lapses, she will take care of it. So if I'm, not, if I'm not praying, she's praying. If I'm not fasting, she's fasting. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't do that. Because you are the head of the home. That means you are the spiritual leader of your home. By the mandate of God upon you as the head of the house. So you should get close to God. Be close to God. If you are not close to God, I want you to repent. Anywhere you are hearing my voice, I want you to repent, 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 repent and become close. Get intimate. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. If you don't know the Bible, please get into the Bible and start studying. Start studying. Because you can't teach your children what you don't know. Hello, somebody. So you are God's man. Everyone say, I'm God's man. All the men in the house, can you say, I am God's man? Say, I am the man of God in my home. 
So that means you are going to hear from God more than your wife hears from God. No, I didn't say you should compete with her, but I want you to strive to hear from God more. So you'll be able to say, this is what God is saying. And if your wife truly hears from God, she'll be able to say, yes. Even before God revealed it to you, he revealed it to me, but I was praying that God would talk to you. So there's a confirmation. So your responsibility is threefold as a man of God in the house. Number one, you have the responsibility of a priest. You have the responsibility of uh, a prophet. And then you also have the responsibility of uh, a king. Please write it down. Don't forget it. You have the responsibility of a priest. You have the responsibility of what? A prophet. And you have the responsibility of the king. That's leadership. So as a priest, your job as a priest is twofold. One is you are the intercessor of the family. What some of us will refer to as prayer warrior. The intercessor for the family. Yes, your wife prays. Yes, she prays hours. You too must pray. Even if you cannot pray three hours, you must have quality time with God every day for your family. The prayer of a father is different. Just the same way you believe that the prayer of a pastor, the pastor of the church is different. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Once the pastor has prayed for you, you feel very confident, right? Because he's a pastor. He's the anointed man of God. So the same way your prayer as the head of the house is different. You lay your hands on your son and prophesying over your son is very powerful. How many of you have read what Isaac did to uh, Jacob? He laid his hands upon his head and blessed him. And when he finished, Esau came said, my father, I this is the food you asked me to prepare. Say, huh? hey, oh, Jacob has taken away your blessing. Ah! And the boy Christ, I have given him everything. He spoke. He believed in his words. He said, I have given everything to him. What else can I give to you? He said, don't give you have one blessing. Just one blessing, my father. Bless me. And all he could say to him is, when you have grown very fat and strong, you will break the yoke of his name. You'll be free and you can make progress for him. That's all. He said, I've given him everything. Have you read also when Jacob gathered his children and began to bless them? Amen, somebody? Everything he spoke about his children all came to pass. Not one failed. Fatherly blessing carries weight. Fatherly curse carries weight. Don't curse your children. Bless them. Use your mouth to alter the wrong things you see in their life. Instead of saying you are a goat head, you are a, you are a cow, you are a dull head, you have basket brain, don't say that. Say you are the most intelligent. I decree your brain is alive. Go and excel. Academically, you will do well. In the name of Jesus, you will do well. You will do well. I bless your brain. You will do well. It reverses everything that is going wrong in his head. Some of you are too quick to curse and speak evil. You have parental authority and you better know how to use it over your children. Don't ruin your children's life. Don't curse them and nail them for life. With the evil that came out of your mouth. Because when you speak those evils, the devil will execute them. Demons will execute them. When you speak those good things, angels of God will carry them out. So which do you want to be carried out? The good ones or the bad ones? Okay. So you are the intercessor. Pray. Stand. Be That's what the priest does. He stands between God and the people. He intercedes for them. He offers sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving on their behalf. He intercedes for them that God should have mercy. That's your responsibility. That means you must be prayerful always. Spend time in prayer. You must lead your family every day in prayer. Every day in my house we pray together. In the morning we must pray together. In the evening we must pray together. It's a rule. If you stay in my house when we call for prayer, you are to come and too. I've had pastors who come and stay with me for a brief time or visiting or preaching. When we call for prayer, they too will come out and join us and pray. Very simple. We don't play with family altars. Let me tell you, the prayers we pray as a family, God answers. We've interceded for people in the church, God answered. We have interceded for our families in that prayer altar, God answered. We have prayed for ourselves and God answered. 
So lead your family in prayer. Don't be there. Your wife will be the one to come and gather the children to pray. When they call, you say, make one of the prayer, they come. Yeah, uh, 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 okay. Go ahead, I'm coming. They would have finished morning devotion before you sluggishly get out of bed. Or when you come, you just stay there. They will not hear your voice again. As a head, you lead them in prayer. If they are asleep, you wake them up. If they are lying down, tell them to stand up. Do your job as a head. You are God's man. Play your role. Praise the Lord. I'm not saying you, may, you, you, are, you are to behave like if you are God. I didn't say so. I said God is counting on you to do these things. And you teach your children to pray. Sometimes you will teach them, you will be leading them in prayer. A time will come, you will say to the child, you lead the prayer. Why are you doing that? You want to hear how the child is praying. Whether the child has learned anything from all the prayers you have been doing. You read the Bible. You explain the Bible. You can call on your wife to do this, to do that, but you are there guiding and leading. So if they get it wrong, you correct them. You train them well. Amen, somebody. The second responsibility of the priest is to teach the Bible. Teach the people. The priests of God are the ones, the custodians of the law. They interpret the law. They teach it to the people. So your job as a priest in your house is not only to pray, but to teach the word of God to them. So do Bible study with them every day. Every time you gather to pray, please share the word at least once a day. Whether morning time or night time, whichever one is convenient, make sure you study the Bible. Did someone hear what I just said? Create time for systematic teaching of the Bible. If you notice any wrong thing that is happening in your family, check one or two scriptures that can help explain it. Then, that day when you gather together, bring it up. But please, your family altar is not a place to settle quarrel. Did someone hear what I just said? The family altar, prayer time, is not a place to do what? Settle quarrel. It's a place to pray, to worship God, to seek God. And God will sort things out. Hallelujah. So, if possible, have a time of question and answer so that if they are not clear, they can ask questions. Organize it and you know, package it in such a way that if they have questions, they can ask and you can answer. And if they have contributions, they can make. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Quickly. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34 and 35 verses 34 and 35 it says women should remain silent in the churches why he said they are not allowed to speak but must be in submission as the law says if they want to inquire about anything they should ask their own husbands at home for it is disgraceful for the women to speak in the church now i am not here to argue whether they should talk in the church or not to talk in church but the reason why i read the scripture is that apostle paul said they should ask their husbands at home which means he expects the husbands to be doing what Bible studies with the family. Study the Bible together. So if you have got questions at home, you can ask. And then the man will open the Bible and explain what he learned in the church. He will share with the family. That's what, why I brought it up. So it's important that you do Bible studies together. If you have not been doing it, some families pray but they don't open the Bible. Please, the Bible must be added. Because when you pray, you talk to God. And when you study the word, what, do, what is God doing? God is talking to you. Hello, church. So this calls for more time, brothers, men, husbands, fathers. It calls for more time with God because you can't teach what you don't know. Our men don't come to Bible study. Everybody's busy. So how do you explain to your wife who is coming to Bible study and learning more than you? You send your children, but you're at home. So when you now bring the Bible to explain and you are spraying it upside down, how would you like your daughter to correct you? Say, Daddy, that's not correct. Or your son will say, Daddy, that's not what Pastor thought. That's not what that passage is saying. Or mommy will say, try to explain. You will feel insulted that your wife is trying to counter you when you are trying to teach your family. Is it not true? Church, answer me now. So make time, read your Bible. Come to Bible study. School of the world in the morning, come. If you have any issue, we have many pastors who know the Bible in this church. Meet any of them, they can explain to you. So that before you start teaching, you have a proper idea. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope I'm not getting some people offended. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Quickly, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15. Now study to show thyself approved unto God a workman, 
that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what God said. So you need to study to be able to divide the word of God with your family. Then Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. And then, you know, and then he says, uh, but thou shalt meditate uh, therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So meditate on the word. And then share the word. And then what will happen? There will be breakthroughs. There will be miracles. Is that correct? You will succeed. Your children will succeed. Your wife will succeed. Your marriage will be peaceful. That shall be your portion in Jesus' name. So please, don't be so busy you don't have time. Joshua was also like you. But probably have more responsibility. I believe he has more responsibility than everybody that I see here. Joshua was the president of Israel. The ruler of Israel. Joshua was also the chief judge of Israel. Joshua was an active commanding officer of the entire Israeli army. He leads them in war. And then he's a husband to the wife and a father to the children. Combining all of these responsibilities, God said, make time to meditate upon my word day and night. It is in looking into it that you will gain understanding and in application of the things you learn, that is where you will have good success and prosper. So make, make time. Study. Read. Come early to church. Attend school of the world. We have been learning about prayer and we are learning some wonderful things. And those of you who have been learning, I'm sure you are improving. But those of you who have never attended one day, they start all the announcements. You are not learning anything. Sometimes you think you know how to pray, but you don't. <laughs> James, Apostle James said, he said, you pray and miss. <laughs> sometimes we pray and miss. Even the scripture says, sometimes we want to pray, we don't know what to pray for. Or how to pray. But the Holy Spirit comes to our aid. There are some things you are asking God that God will never do. And you are still busy asking. Until you learn what the scripture says. So please come. Learn. Study. So you can teach your children well. Then you are the prophet. So what is the role of the prophet? The prophet is what? The one who hears from God and tells the people. So learn to have quiet time with God. Learn to have quiet time with God. I won't have time because of time. I want you to read these scriptures on your own. Sec uh, Genesis chapter 2, 15 to 17. God spoke to the man what to eat in the garden and what not to eat. And told him a particular tree should not eat, but the wife wasn't there. Then Genesis chapter... You know, because it was after God spoke to him that God now said, let us make him a helper for him. Then Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 to 12. When God now came, God was called to the man. He called to the man. He didn't talk to the wife. God relates with the leader. He relates with the head. When there are issues, he doesn't call the people. He calls the head, the leader. Adam, where are you? It is Adam and Eve, where are you? The guy said, well, I, Adam now answered, I said, I, we were naked, so we decided to hide. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree that I said you should not eat of? Then the man answered, it is the woman you gave me. Ah. So who was God talking with? Was it the woman? The man. Who did he give instruction to? Was it the woman? The man. So that calls for you to be close to God and to have hearing ears, seeing eyes, and an understanding mind. And a heart that is willing to obey. So always ask God for this and obey God. Amen, somebody? Listen to God and make sure your family obeys him. And then in chapter, the same chapter 3, verse 17, what do we learn there? We see there that, that God told Adam, because you listened to your wife and allowed her to convince you to do what I said you should not do, you did not insist that you and your wife do what I said should be done. Then... You will suffer before you eat from the ground. So, train yourself to hear the voice of God, fathers. All the fathers in the house, all the husbands in the house, are you hearing me? All the men of God in the house, are you hearing me? As a prophet, train yourself to hear the voice of God. Be willing to follow the plan of God for your family. Teach your family to value and respect the word of God. And to take God's word serious. Teach your family to value the word of God. And to respect God's word. So if you are sharing the Bible. And any of them is making noise. Please correct them. Let them know. When God is talking. You pay attention. God said my son. 
Incline thy ear unto my saying. Say, pay attention to what I say. When God is talking, you listen. Anytime the word of God is going on, listen. And if you are teaching them like that, and then they come to church, they see that you are playing with your phone when they are preaching the word of God. Don't you think you have countered everything you taught them at home? Or they see that when, when there is a, a phone call, you will leave the, leave the hall and go and take call outside while the message is going on. And then you come back home and tell them, obey the word of God, listen when the word of God is coming. They won't take you serious. You train them by example. Everybody say example. Say it again, example. And please, learn not to lean on your own understanding. Whatever God tells you to do, even though you may not like it, please just do it, okay? Even though you may not know how it will work, follow it. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. So build your marriage and your family values on the word of God. Not on the traditions of your people. On the word of God. Not what you read on the pages of magazines and books. Not what you read from all the secular education you have acquired, but on the word of God. And God will bless you. You are God's man and he's counting on you. Amen? Then you are the king too. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 says, Wives, submit to your husbands as, the Lord, as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. His body, of which he is a savior. You are the head of your house, and that is responsibility. You are the king in your own family. That is responsibility. So your duty is to make sure you lead them well. Direct your family properly. That means you must think through before you speak. You must consult with God before you make decisions. So you are the decision maker and you are not going to blame your wife for failures of your decision. You are not going to blame your children for the failures of your decision. So when you make decisions, then you are also responsible for the outcome. Am I correct? And then Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 to 3 God also tells us to relate with our children in such a way we don't provoke them to anger. So the wife submits, the children submit. So it starts like this. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. So children are to submit. You are to direct them well. Children, you are to honor your parents, but at the same time, Parents are not to provoke their children to anger. Watch it so you don't harden them rather than soften them. So as a king, you are the administrator of your family. The leadership responsibility is on you and you are accountable to God. Everybody say, Daddy, you are accountable to God. Say it well. Daddy, you are accountable to God. Can all the women say, my husband, you are accountable to God? Can all the men say, I, I am accountable to God? That means the success and failure of your marriage is in your hands. The way you play your card determines how things turn out. Is someone hearing me? So you are going to take responsibility for the outcome of your, your children's life. You will shift it to your wife. You are the decision maker in your home and don't allow your wife or your children to make decisions for you. Don't allow friends to make decisions for you. Don't allow family members to make decisions for you because you are going to account for those decisions. Now this means you are going to bear more, tolerate more than your wife. You are going to be more patient than your wife. Tolerate more than your wife. Bear more than your wife. Is someone hearing me? Tolerate more. Bear more. More patient. Very important. You've got to do everything that you can within your power to make sure all works well. It also means you are the one who will protect your family. Protect them from harm. So when you see danger coming, protect them. If you watch the way they are moving or who they are moving with and you study that person and pray about it and see that this person is going to be a bad influence, you have to protect them by cutting them off from that person. You have to decide what kind of programs they watch on television. 
Your job is to protect them. Protect them from the devil. Protect them from satanic influence. Protect them from wrong company. Protect them from wrong friends. And then it's your duty to teach them to live like royalty. If you are a king, your children should live like people who belong to kings. Amen? Teach them to talk well. Talk properly. Teach them to dress well. Teach them to package themselves well. Teach them to respect who they are and respect other people. That's what royalty does. Teach them to walk in authority and power that they have in Christ Jesus. If you do this, your home will be a delight. So the man is not only the husband of one wife, not one at home and on some outside. He is the father of the godly and wonderful children that God has given him and he is the man of God. Playing the role of a priest, the role of a prophet, and the role of a king. Is my message clear? Can all the fathers stand up and come forward? Can every other person stand up and stretch forth their hands and begin to pray for our daddies? You can see this is a, a lot of responsibility. How many of you agree? A lot of responsibility. He saw in that little drama from the children all the load the man carries. I said, everybody stand up, stretch forth your hands for them and pray. All the young men who are yet to be married, it will soon reach your turn. You better pray with all your heart. But what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Pray for them. That unusual strength, if you don't know how to pray in understanding, pray in tongues. Unusual strength and power will come upon them to fulfill this responsibility and they will not fail. That God will enlarge them, give them means, money, success, breakthrough, enlarge their business, prosper the work of their hands, give them a lot of patience. Women can be a headache. Children, is a, it sometimes can be a burden. Pray for them that God will energize them. God, wait, what are you doing? Is that prayer? If you don't want to pray, close your mouth and sit down. If you want to pray, please pray. This hall is full, so I expect to hear your voices. Pray for them. Pray for them with all your heart. Pray for your father. Pray for the fathers in the house. Say, Lord, empower them. Father, fill them with your spirit. Lord, energize them. Release unusual grace upon their lives to fulfill this responsibility. That they will be faithful as husbands. That they will be faithful as fathers. That they will be faithful as men of God. In the name of Jesus, if you have a child, whether you are married or not, you are a father, come and join these people now. Rabara sobre keteriando robosa daraba. Le rebro sobre papori le grado shombre kesete. Mara le brado sure papra kataya. Le le brado zozo brakate yande. Je le rebro sobre ke sombre le pra papara la babrose brekete ya balire babrose. Imbrato shaba babrose brekete yete papa ruse brekete ya darwanda. Church, please join me and pray for them. Pray for them. Pray in tongues. Pray in understanding. Pray for them with the whole of your heart. Your father may not be here. As you're praying for them, God will be reaching to your father. Your husband may not be here. As you're praying for them, God will be reaching your husband where you are. Open your mouth and pray. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Ask God to visit them. You too will become a father tomorrow. Pray for these ones. In the name of Jesus, they need grace. They need anointing. They need favor. They need the power of God. They need breakthrough in their lives. They need money. They need a lot of things. To help them fulfill this assignment that God will provide. Baralabo shabra ba pro secretaria. Jada da 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 balara ba da bra sabro pro sore bra kata. Lebre de bre ba pro lebra so se atari balori adere bo soto. Embra so pre kesi ante lebadesa. Ra bra ba balara ba da shada bara kasaya. Oh, I bless you in the name of Jesus. Mommy, come and pray before I pray for them. Fast. Father, in the name of Jesus, 
We'll pray for the men represented here today. Lord, we have been made to understand that these ones are standing in the gap. Father, Lord, you have given them responsibility. Lord, the same God that have put them in that position. Father, you will lift them up. You will provide for them. You will meet their needs. They will never lack in the name of Jesus. Father, as they dwell in your presence, security will be guaranteed. Blessings, financial blessings will become their portion. In the precious name of Jesus, the Lord will go ahead of you. He will make the crooked path straight in the name of Jesus. You will not stumble on the way. You will love your family. You will love your spouse in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because we know these ones will not hear the devil. They will not hear the enemy. Only the Lord will they hearken to. Only the Lord will they obey. Only the words of the Lord will they do with law. In the name of Jesus, in your lives you will increase. You will be better than you are today. In the next few months, you will look back and say the Lord is good. Father, for their businesses, prosper them. Increase them. Lord, elevate them. Lord, in the name of Jesus, put a new song in their mouth. Father, change their story, Lord. As many that are complaining, we know, God, that you will step into their boat. In the name of Jesus, Jehovah Jireh, they will have reason to thank you. From henceforth, they will glorify your name. Thank you because all that concerns their life is perfected today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Lamb of God. Father, there shall be financial breakthrough. There will be financial lifting. In the name of Jesus, God will open an unusual door unto you so that you will have more than enough to take up your responsibility. In the name of Jesus, and you will serve the Lord more than you have ever served Him. You will love the Lord more. In the name of Jesus, every form of distraction that want to take you away from God, today we curse. In the name of Jesus, you will stand by God, and God will stand by you. Thank you for doing it, Lord. We thank you because we know from henceforth, among them will be millionaires. Among them will be billionaires. Among them, they will begin to count trillions in the name of Jesus. We will have more importers in the name of Jesus. More doors of blessings will be opened unto you. I cause the doors of your businesses to be open in the name of Jesus. Every hindrance is on your way today. Lord, take away in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you because it is done. These are men of power. Men of grace. Men of great favor. Today you are favored. But the Lord in the name of Jesus. As many of you. That are not in love with your wives. And not close to your family. God will give you a new heart. A heart with which you can use to bring everyone together. A heart of great relationship. So that they can confide in you. And the house will begin to experience peace. From henceforth, the peace of God will reign in your homes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for perfecting it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, we bless and thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, as I anoint these men with this oil today, I pray for fresh grace. Fresh unction. Lord, to be able to fulfill their God-given responsibilities as the heads of their homes. Lord, they will be faithful husbands, faithful fathers, Lord, and faithful men of God in their families in the name of Jesus. Everything that is lacking, let it be provided. Where they need increase, let increase come. Father, release favor. Release strength, increase their capacity to tolerate their wives, increase their capacity to love their wives, increase their capacity, Lord God, to take care of their children, increase their capacity to provide for them, that they will have more than enough to meet the needs of the family and see have left over. Thank you, Father. As this oil it touches their head, Lord, new grace, new favor, in the name of Jesus. If I anoint you, go back to your seat. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus. 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 
in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. 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 In Jesus' name. Please, if you need healing, quickly come. If you need healing in your body, quickly come. Quickly come. If you need healing in your body, quickly come. I won't say it again. Father, I pray for everyone who needs healing. And I ask, oh God, by the anointing of your spirit, that Lord, your healing anointing will flow. I rebuke the infirmity from your body. I command you healed by the power of God in Jesus' name. I release a healing anointing upon you. I command that you be healed in Jesus' name. I release a healing anointing upon you. I command that you be healed in Jesus' name. I release a healing anointing upon you. I command that you be healed in Jesus' name. As I pray for you, just believe and check yourself. You discover you are healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. In who is you or him? I release a healing anointing upon your body. I command that you be healed in Jesus' name. I release a healing anointing upon you. I command that you be healed in Jesus' name. I release a healing anointing. I command that you be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus.